Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us here in the Lonely Draft League's Mega Division Season 2 Finals. I am Joe Brown, joined by Regina Ang Lee, and we are here to cast this matchup between the Luminous Lunalas and EV Eviolites. And Regina, this, this is VGC. This is right in our wheelhouse. This should be fun. I'm super excited. Uh, we were just obviously discussing earlier the team names and stuff, so I'm hoping the team compositions are more fun than the team names. I really like Luminous Lunalas, though. I will say um, I was expecting a double L for Luminion instead, just because it's right <laughs> there. So, but, uh, and uh, I, I will go on record and say that I do have a very strong bias against Eevees, but I'm looking forward to seeing this match. Well, let's see how it plays out here. We will be watching, um, so the trainers HSOJ or HSOJ and Ignite are the two players we're watching from uh, HSOJ's perspective here, so I might as well hit start as we look at the team preview. HSOJ with the team of Tornadus, Kyogre, Ferrothorn, Serena, Raichu, and Urshifu, and like, I know it's a draft league, but this kind of almost looks like a real legit team that you could bring to a regional. Draft riders, you also have to be careful because if you let your uh, your your other draft opponents be able to pick up Pokemon that would do really well in a regional, you're kind of putting yourself at a disadvantage overall. So something like that is actually kind of cool to see. Yeah, and then on the other side, Eternatus, who obviously we don't really see in uh, in in VGC. There's uh, a lot of fairy types and whatnot that make it not worth uh, showing up with its. It's special attack. It's not as good as, as Zashin and, and Zamazenta, even though it's not really good. But Blastoise, Amoongus, Hitmontop, the... Uh, why, why am I blanking on Umbreon's name and Incineroar? All right, you're going to you're gonna take over here uh, for, for the start of this game, Regina. Hey, so just a heads up, I actually can't see the video right now. Oh, I no! I got you, I got you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got you. No. We're going to continue. Don't worry. Don't worry. We got it. I pressed the wrong button at one point for uh, Regina, so boom, there you go. <laughs> okay, so we've got uh, the traders up here. I will say though a quick comment about Eternatus. I actually think it's kind of cool because Dynamax can, you know, will still will still still do double damage to Dynamax Pokemon. So if you can't pick up something like Zacian, like you would, uh, because this is a draft league, it's still a nice option, especially because. Dynamax is the big thing here, but we have Hypno on top and Eternatus out on the field here. So, you know, you've got the pressure for the Dynamax and then you've got the Fake Out. But a Fake Outer in return with the Raichu and Urshifu. Urshifu just one of those Pokemon that every time I look at it, I always wonder why does it exist because it is just <laughs> so full of really good like mechanics, right? We uh, Adrenaline Orb though on the Raichu, so we're gonna raise that speed here. Gonna make sure it's the fastest Fake Outer just in case, or be able to at least uh, sort of switch out in case it needs to. Adrenaline Orb, that's really cool to see from the Raichu. Obviously worked on the Hitmon top, but also the uh, in you know potential Incineroar having double Intimidate going that way. And that's what's so great about Draft Leagues is you can really prepare for your specific opponent. You're not going against the whole field. This is the finals. You're facing one person, and you use your you know your ten or eleven Pokemon to your benefit. Uh, so that will have Raichu being the best fake out right now. But if you just fake out Hitmon top. To stop it from faking out your Shifu, then you really are leaving the Eternatus wide open for a strong attack in this spot. And our Shifu going for the detect here, gonna protect itself on this turn. Raichu faking out the Eternatus, gonna make sure it can't do any sort of damage on this turn. Hit on top though, going for a close combat right into that protected spot for the Shifu. So, uh, you know, not taking that moment to go for um, an exchange of fake outs on this turn. Yeah, pretty cool to see the close combat right away from turn one. On him on top, kind of expecting the opponent to not fake out the hit on top slot. Maybe uh, you know you kind of you might catch them sleeping. Either they do fake out him on top, and it doesn't matter what you clicked anyway, or if they were really over aggressive and went for a potential wicked blow into the eternity slot, you would have got the free close combat for you know super effective damage there. Uh, now that the fake outs have been used, though, we are essentially uh, in the same position, uh, but without any priority at the spot uh, because the. The Raichu doesn't have much offensive output at this moment, you know, especially against these two Pokemon, so might want to switch up their game plan. Yeah, uh, but we have, and we have that Serena coming into the field in place of the Urshifu. I love seeing Serena because I really loved using it back in, like, its heydays. Nuzzle from Raichu, though, going to go into the turn. is going to make sure that you have that paralysis. It's 
gonna be one of those things where you, every time you roll the dice, you're gonna be really afraid of it, but more importantly, you're gonna make sure that you have that speed. There are close combat from the Hitman top going to Serena on that switch and gonna t uh, take down that special defensive defense. Oh. And that nuzzle automatically just immediately paying off here. That paralysis is gonna stop that Eternus from getting any double damage down into my, maybe that Serena's map, maybe that Raichu. We'll never know because it got paralyzed. The Raichu really, it's done its job so far in these first couple of turns. You'd expect potentially uh, maybe one strong, you know, damaging attack like Volt Switch in this scenario. But for the most part, it really is one a great supportive Pokemon, not just in draft leagues, but in VGC or in doubles in general. Uh, so now that you really slow down the Eternatus, you don't have to worry about Hitmontop being fast anymore. So uh, now this Water type does not look like it's going to have a fun time if a Volt Switch comes out. Yeah, Blast is always going to come into that place of that Eternatus. But right, you're just going for that nuzzle to hit on top. Going to try to make sure that those paralysis just kind of really hurt uh, their opponent. As Serena's triple axle would have been great against that uh, Eternatus. Just only getting that one time Whoa. attack, though. And oh my gosh, this is a two for two nuzzle paralysis turn from this Raichu. This. Uh, this this little rat is putting in some work here, but Blast is recovering that HP that it took from that uh, one hit triple axel with that, that leftovers. Yeah, I think the Blast Switch, we can't see its hit point counter, but I think it is one HP away from being full HP. Like there's that one little pixel of, uh, of black there. So it's essentially full health. Uh, at this point, if you're Rachu, you can try to nuzzle the Blastoise slot. The only thing you'd have to worry about is to protect or Eternity switching back in. So I think you really want to get some offense on the field if you're on Asajj's side. Oh, but Blast is going to make sure Raichu can't go for 3 for 3 here. Serena going into the triple axel, maybe expecting her to protect, but at least getting some damage onto this Hitmontop. And unlike before, is able to get all three hits in on that Hitmontop, but not quite able to get that last bit of HP. Uh, that Hitmontop is able to land a close combat on Raichu, taking another hit to its defense and special defense. Isn't able to pick up an HP, uh, sorry, a knockout as well either. So Raichu's still around to be a little bit of a menace um, for, for their opponents. And we can see that the actual electric attack of choice for Raichu is Thunderbolt in this spot, so not Volt Switch. So you don't have the switching availability out of it, but you actually do have a stronger special attack in Thunderbolt. Unfortunately for Egg Knight, the previous turn, Blastoise uh, kind of protected and didn't get anything to happen there. So unless you want to risk the 30% chance at a double protect, he is kind of a sitting duck for Raichu to target down with Thunderbolt. The other slot, uh, I also want to say with Hitmontop, those close combat defense drops really hurt it because those triple axle hits from Serena actually did significantly more damage than they would have if he was at neutral defense. And now we see that last Pokemon here. It's going to be Incineroar, everyone's favorite Intimidator here. Uh, not going to matter much on that Raichu. It is at minus, uh, it is at that minus two still. But Thunderbolt from Raichu going to be able to get it for free into that blast. So it's still kind of a sturdy Pokemon, though. So doesn't do as much uh, damage here. Triple Axel from Serena catching that Incineroar in. But, you know, that resistance just makes it. So it does very minimal damage. It's essentially, this Incineroar is coming in for free. And you have that ability for that fake out pressure next turn. As long as, you know, that Quilly Maj Majesty isn't going to... Uh, stop you from that body press gonna be able to deal some more damage into that serena but uh both of these pokemon are still sitting here looking pretty yeah i'm actually surprised that thunderbolt did so little to blastoise we obviously see its item is, is leftover so it's not like it has assault vest or anything to tank a thunderbolt a little bit better there so that really maybe just not a lot of uh you know offensive uh you know training for the raichu into its special attack it's more focused in its you know support utility so uh to see that a thunderbolt is a three hit ko super effectively on a blastoise seems like uh, uh could be problematic for eight sides all right, and we've got that Kyogre finally coming in here. Raichu going for the Nuzzle, so no risk with that uh, fake. I didn't want to say, like, oh, yeah, it's a Queenly Majesty here. Nuzzle going to make sure that that Blastoise might not be able to move here. Throat Chop from Incineroar is going to finally be able to pick up that Raichu's uh, knockout. But honestly, this Raichu has managed to paralyze almost every single Pokemon um, on Egg Knight's team. And right now, oh, yeah, wow. that Blaster is not able to. I'm, I'm not going to lie. This Raichu, I think, is like the MVP right now just for this match because it has paralyzed every... It has nuzzled almost every single Pokemon in here, and that nuzzle has paid off turn one. Um, the Rangers, though, are also really cool to see. Yeah, it's essentially like Kyogre just gave Blastoise a second set of leftovers, being able to recover at the end of every turn while the rain is up from Rain Dish, and then Blastoise from holding its own 
uh, its own leftovers. So with Urshifu switching in in this slot, it is unintimidated. You do have him on top in the back that can intimidate it, and that really is one of the best ways to deal with Urshifu is getting its attack down minus one, minus two. Uh, but you know, pretty much whatever is get switched into this Incineroar slot would probably get knocked out. Uh, the Eternatus is is pretty pretty healthy, I believe. It actually might still be at full health, so that would be able to take a close combat, but not the Wicked Blow as well. So this is really a tough spot for 8 sides because do you lock in the Wicked Blow here for a crit, or do you try to go for a close combat? And no switches as that blast. There's no point in protecting front of an Urshifu is going to take a Wicked Blow. Not it, not being knocked out here, but again, that has to worry about the Paralysis. Interestingly enough, Origin Pulse on the Kyogre and not Water Spout, but still going to do a heavy ton of damage in the rain. It's able to pick up that double knockout. Uh, every time I see someone click Origin Pulse, my heart does stop just a little bit as I <laughs> wait for the like, animation to load. Uh, I, I'm sure plenty of us have been there waiting for that Origin Pulse miss. Life Orb Kyogre going to make sure that that little bit of extra damage even in the rain is going to help it out but uh, kind of just sort of i want to say like you know we're just now in the end game where you, as long as barring any wild misses or you know god forbid like you just time out on your move choices i'm pretty <laughs> sure this is a lock up game yeah and that showing life orb is why you wouldn't have the i guess you could maybe have it for your first attack um but opting for the Origin Pulse instead of Water Spout because you're reducing your own HP every time you attack, so therefore you're effectively giving yourself less damage each turn. Uh, so playing really tempting fate uh, with the 85% accuracy, I do wonder how that information for Ignite is going to work out in Game 2 and a potential Game 3 is knowing that the Kyogre has to potentially risk missing a an Origin Pulse in a, in a, in a, a crucial spot. And now if you're H-Sage, you have, you have a very strong lead. Both of your opponents have been paralyzed multiple times at this point. Uh, so you know that you can switch around and try to be safe. This is the finals. You don't have to care about Pokemon count, you know, your uh, your KD record or anything like that. You just need to win if it's 1-0 or 4-0. It doesn't matter like it would in the regular season matchups. But uh, it doesn't hurt to play it safe. Oh man, watching that move time counter go down just made me think, oh no, did I just accidentally like <laughs> say something that I shouldn't have? Uh, but Serena coming in here for the Urshifu, Urshifu just, you know, you want to make sure that your attack is at full with that one, especially because um, when you're like, even if you're joining it's just one Pokemon, like that attack power is just so important. Eternatus is able to hold on even through that Ice Beam here, that life of just knocking off a little bit more health here. Eternatus going for an agility though, going to try Whoa. to be a little bit faster, like really interesting move choice there. Um, it's very rare to see sort of status moves like that ever come into play. I want to say that that hit Montop, um, either it was paralyzed or that uh, we saw that feeling of energy. I might have blinked and missed it. In oh, it did get paralyzed. I think it went for okay. fake. I think it tried to fake out the Urshifu in the slot or potentially, but it was paralyzed. So we're never gonna we're never gonna actually know what it went for. All right, and Serena able to land the triple axle on that Eternus is gonna be able to knock that out. That hit Montop. Uh, I, there is nothing this Hitman Top can do at all except just go down to this Ice Beam. I, it tried valiantly, um, but that Raichu was just so fantastic. I, it carried so much weight in this match, like those nuzzles going down into almost every single Pokemon, barring that Incineroar, and then just paying off that same turn, which is kind of wild to see. Yeah, you have to wonder if Ignite has a potential Lumberry or ways to negate the nuzzle because it really was problematic for his Eternatus. Obviously, it's big strategy by revealing agility. His Eternatus wants to get super fast and then just sweep through the rest of the field. It was a bit of a curious decision uh, in my opinion, to reveal agility at the end of game one, since it kind of was already wrapped up for eight sides there, uh, that draft leagues, Pokemon in general is a game of information reveal, but draft leagues, especially because you are counter teaming specifically for your opponent in this matchup in the finals seemed uh, uh, a bit curious to show that you had acts or that you had agility in your slot because now eight sides has the information going into game two. Yeah, so, okay, I'm actually really interested in this because I think that, you know, if you know that your opponent's right, you has that adrenaline orb, it's so scary to lead with that hit on top of Incineroar. So I really uh, kind of love the whole to potential Tornogre leader. I would have been 100% down for that. I, I 
I think Raichu has so much potential, though, uh, again, to just sort of be like, you know what, nothing can stop me from nuzzling you, and if you bring in something like your Hitmontop or your Incineroar, I can punish that. Um, and, and Team Preview is just so stressful to look at right now, and be like, wondering, like, what do you do now in the second game? Also doesn't even have access to a ground type, or potentially even a ground move, looking at the six Pokemon on the left, right? So, unless Incineroar brought a ground attack for some reason to handle the Raichu. It doesn't look like Ignite has anything that can super effectively handle Raichu on turn one to stop those nuzzles. What I could, you know, see happening is you bring a Moongus to redirect Nuzzle away and you don't really care that a Moongus is peril or has its speed taken down from paralysis as long as it is able to get the rage powders off and potentially even spore Raichu in return. That could have been an option, but instead we're going with a, uh, a different choice here with one of Eevee's evolutions. Is going to be in beside that Eternatus in place of that hit on top from that first game. Raichu and Urshifu, though, making a comeback here. Because you know what? If it wasn't broke, well, why why fix it, right? But no Adrenaline of Activation here. We're going to see that fake out go into that Eternatus spot. Uh, and, you know, not wanting to take any chances against that Umbreon. Because we've seen in other uh, in other leagues, actually, that Umbreon can be a bit of a menace if you leave it alone. It's bulky. It's got access to some really great moves. It's kind of a problem if you let it stay around for way too long. Oh, no, definitely. I mean, we saw at the, the World Championship stage just how strong Umbreon can be if it goes unchecked by getting second at Worlds in 2019 in D.C. Uh, but with this switch out, depending on who you switch in, we know you could potentially have Intimidators in the back, uh, so you'd have to worry about a close combat into that slot. Poison-type Amoongus would not be worried about a close combat. An adjustment, just like you had uh, mentioned earlier, was that Amoongus would make a really good uh, Pokemon to bring into this match because, like you said, you know, when you redirect Rage Powder, you can at least get that Raichu to just uh, focus all its attention uh, on yourself. Oh, but if, Ooh. I, did he click into the electric terrain? He because did. I'm kind I, of I in think love he locked it in. Uh, that is so fantastic and really the only reason that you would have it on a Raichu like this, like right, a manual electric terrain to make sure that things like spore. Uh, so instead of you instead of you inflicting the status conditions on your opponent, you, you don't have to worry about your opponent inflicting something like sleep on you. Uh, so Rage Patrick are going to draw in that the attention mirror, but you know, the Serena switched in for, for that Urshifu. Eternet is taking that moment to go for the agility, boost up that speed, going to make sure that it's a little bit of a problem now. Raichu just going to 100% guarantee that none of those uh, there's no potential spoilers, nothing will be put to sleep. That's a really cool reveal to show Electric Terrain where your opponent really can't stop your nuzzles, but with one turn, you have effectively stopped Spore for the next you know, for the next five turns. In this spot, though, for H Sage, having a Serena who's weak to poison types and then a Raichu with you know not a lot of offensive pressure, although now Thunderbolt will do more damage thanks to the terrain. Uh, it's not the great offensive position to be in, so you might want to pivot at some point to get a little more pressure to stop this agility-boosting Eternatus at some point. Oh, wow. Okay, so Avogus is like, hey, I'm going to peace out over here. Here's my friend Incineroar with the Intimidate. Going to activate that Adrenaline Orb. Uh, so Serena, you know, early wouldn't have had to worry about a Rage Powder because of its uh, of the Grass Typing here. But Eternus going for the Sludge Bomb into that Serena spot. It is going to do, oh, it's going to be able to pick wow. up that Knockout on Serena. That's really rough because it had the potential to go for those triple uh, axles. Raichu is able to at least now get that Nuzzle down onto Eternus. It's a little bit too late even with that extra speed for itself. Uh, unfortunately, you know, Serena had to go down for for like for that nuzzle to like pop off. Yeah, but a a very safe play from Isage for Raichu, just clicking nuzzle into the the uh, Eternatus position because one, either Amoongus redirects it away anyway and you still get the nuzzle onto Amoongus, or Amoongus switches out like we did see in this spot for Incineroar or hit him on top in the back uh, to have a have a fake out. Um, and you are able to freely nuzzle the Eternatus. So its speed has been reduced to, you know, essentially back to neutral uh, after the agility and then paralysis. And then now you're risking with that 25% chance every turn that even if Eternatus has all the damage capabilities in the world, there's still that chance that it can just get paralyzed. And then the next thing too, though, is when you get rid of Serena, you get rid of the sort of the game of like, can I fake out, can I not fake out, right? So now you're going to make sure that hey, I can click this freely and at least stop something else for a turn and get a turn just to fight, to, to at least be able to maybe hit something. But now that guessing game is gone. 
Oh, for sure. And that Incinero just switched in on the previous turn, right? So it does have access to its fake out currently. If you want to hit Kyogre with the fake out uh, on this spot, Laura, I guess, switched it up. But that would stop a really strong Origin Pulse in the rain. Oh, wow. Mugus is coming back, able to get back some of the HP because they're generated. Protect from Kyogre. I, you know, I, I can see why. It's just a little bit of a stressful situation. Uh, Amoongus is going to get hit with that nuzzle, though. So I really love this game where everyone is just ignoring Raichu for some reason and just saying, hey, uh, <laughs> this, is, this is, you know, we're going to let you nuzzle to death. Um, and we're going to see that Meteor Beam charge up here. That White Herb going to make sure that it's going to be able to go off on, uh, sorry, that Power Herb. Um, I'm so used to seeing wider lately for some reason. Yeah. Been, like, like just pulling on a ladder stuff. But right, you're gonna be able to take that like a champ here. Is able to hang on. Was uh able to get the nuzzle on the Amoongus. I think either or for Incinero or Amoongus, that nuzzle is still nice. I think that's crazy that. Raichu, you know, not even close, survived a plus one meteor beam from a legendary Pokemon in Eternatus. Uh, I don't believe Ignite was going for, you know, trying for the super strong effective hit or calling a switch or anything like that. Really, it gave you the special attack boost that you know that you needed. Eternatus is not pot potentially not long for this match at this point being paralyzed. There's a lot of things that might not be going its way. So you want to try to take as much uh, effect as you can while the turns you have it and getting a plus one special attack boost will definitely help there oh no and that amoongus is that uh that nuzzle paralysis is gonna hurt it right now as it is not able to go for um what i'm assuming is that rage powder as kyogre is able to hang on from that sludge bomb Ooh. gonna knock it into uh sorry get that ice beam down into the turnus but even a double down from both a thunderbolt on electric terrain and that ice beam is not enough to pick up the knockout and turnus so if this amoongus can break through this paralysis this might actually be fantastic. oh yep there it is yeah, the that's huge to break through for the Rage Powder. Take away attacks from Eternatus. Oh, right, you're gonna go into the Thunderbolt and that Amoongus. It's not, you know, I don't know if he. Oh, oh no! no! They're just, they're just switching off here. The Origin Pulse, though, the safe, uh, the safe move to click here as you are able to hit both Pokemon here, so that Rage Powder wouldn't have mattered. Uh, the Eternatus, though, gonna get knocked out, but. Honestly, if I could give this Raichu a medal, I 100% <laughs> would because I am amazed at how often that nuzzle has been paying off in the most crucial moments. That's a devastating paralysis for Ignite because if you get your, your Sludge Bomb or whatever attack you want to go into the Kyogre, you can potentially knock it out, right? Look how low health Kyogre is, and then you don't get hit with the Origin Pulse. So it forces... Uh, it, for, it, it forces h Sas to come in with his next Pokemon, and then your your Eternatus is still there, and now you don't have that option. You have an Amoongus and an Umbreon, which is not a lot of offensive pressure. Protect itself this turn as Raichu takes the opportunity to set up Electric Terrain again. Going to just absolutely shut down any potentials for Spores here. Umbreon coming into the fielding place of his Fallen Comrade. Going to have to take that Origin Pulse uh, from Kyogre here. And, you know, Kyogre kind of on its last legs as, as it's going to slowly start taking more damage from that life orb. Umbreon, though, absolutely taking this like a champ. Like, it's still in the green. Uh, going for the Snarl, going to knock down the special attack here. Not enough to pick up the knockout on Kyogre, but at least you're getting the special attack drops. Um, but honestly, like, this Raichu Kyogre pairing is kind of terrifying, all, all things considered. Yeah, you can see how this team made it to the finals, right? It, obviously, you have the synergy with Kyogre and Tornadus, who we haven't even seen in this matchup. But then the Adrenaline Orb Raichu, making sure it's the fastest fake out on the field. Nuzzle, which I think has like a 40 or 50% success rate on Paralysis right now, which is way above its uh, its potential percentages uh, in uh, any given matchup. So uh, this team has a lot of really strong synergy. And then whatever Raichu and Gang can't handle, or she who can come in at the end and clean up the rest. Oh my goodness, this the, I think this Raichu is Oh my no! god. No, this is ridiculous. I think this Raichu is legitimately on on sort of like a uh, however many nuzzles it's hit, it's at a, per, a perfect percentage of <laughs> making sure that paralysis has happened that same turn. I am amazed at this. 
at, the, at this point, you can't. You just gotta sit back and laugh, right? It's not like oh, one turn to sign the game because it's been five different turns, so you can't even be, you know, upset anymore if you had one thing go your way. Sometimes you just have to sit back, you know, imaginary handshake because this is over the internet, and and just say this is Pokemon. This is what happens. I, I, you know what? Like, hey, Among Us, congratulations on breaking through uh, that paralysis for this turn. Rage powdering here, gonna draw that Thunderbolt into it. Or Shifu gonna have to close combat into that spot as well. And uh, Among Us is still able to hold on. So you know what? It, it is it is trying its best right now to make sure that it is not quite out of the match. Umbreon going for the foul play into that Urshifu gonna do damage based off of its attack. Um, so getting the critical hit, you, you know, saying last turn, hey, I might have been paralyzed, but I'll return the favor this turn. And <laughs> I will. I will give those two Pokemon. They are trying their best. Well, what's funny is because Ratchet has had so many paralysis, you know, turns. It's not just kind of expecting it because oh no, the Amoogus is getting paralyzed, so I don't need to, you know, try to hit it with Wicked Blow. It's because it's not going to be able to redirect my my close combat away. Of course, that turn Amoogus ended up being able to Rage Powder, but it, your RNG is so good, you're almost kind of expecting the paralysis to come at this point. Yeah, and uh, the the Incineroar switch in here for in place of that Among Us is really nice because at least you get another Intimidate down onto uh, this or Shifu. Uh, not quite enough though, as it is able to pick up that knockout on Umbreon, who did the best that it could uh, in the three turns that I think it was on the field here. Right, she doesn't get some extra damage down into um, that Incineroar, and Among Us recovers some of that health that it had lost again thanks to um, thanks to that regenerated ability. But honestly, you have. To, I don't want to say I consider Incineroar a completely supportive Pokemon because it's kind of scary offensively, but, it, you know, in this case, it sort of is. I also want to point out with the Umbreon, it did land that critical hit, so it has done more for than most of the team has in the matchup, right? Uh, so it is definitely doing a great job in this spot. Incineroar is the best offensive pressure that Ignite has left in this, in this matchup, but uh, I'm just not sure it's going to be enough. I swear, if this Incineroar is, like, paralyzed this turn, I think I'm just going to quit. I just am going to No, okay. <laughs> wait, wait, okay. So, the Polypa from, from Among Us is able to finally pick up this knockout on Raichu. Or Shifu is behind her protect, so nothing is going to matter right here, uh, I think, at this point. Uh, except that Electric Terrain did manage to disappear. Uh, Kyogre, though, is on its last vestiges of any sort of uh, of any health. But if it manages to land an Origin Pulse, good, good, for, good for her. I just... That Raichu, man, I can't... Hey, this has been like a 10 or 11 turn match here, right? Because we had two electric terrain uses by the Raichu, Raichu yeah. in this spot. So now that both of Ignite's Pokemon are paralyzed, they're going to be slower than Kyogre. And Kyogre definitely has some wiggle room against uh, Amoongus, who might not even have a grass attack. Uh, we don't know. We've we only seen Palm Puff. And a fire type in the rain. It's got It's got some leeway to miss origin pulses. There's the Wicked Blow from Urshifu, and it's just, you know, you're just, just going to knock out the Samungus now, and it's just, with a critical, yeah, the critical hit from the Wicked Blow, like, and every time I see that, I'm always like, yeah, it just kind of sucks that this is, like, one of those types of moves. Uh, Kyogre did not miss the Origin Pulse and is able to hit that Incineroar. Uh, it's life Orb single target <laughs> in the rain. I just, I, I don't know what else there is to say that this is the one, like, washed out cat, like, honestly. I, I mean, Kyogre, you know, knocked itself out, and Urshifu stands the lone victor in this in this match. But um, one hundred thousand percent, I I just have to say, H. Sage better buy a plushie of Raichu because that thing put it in work. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna look at the draft board right now just to see uh, Raichu. Where is Raichu? Raichu is a seven point Pokemon, right? So oh the highest. Pokemon in this draft are 15 points. Xerneas, Eveltal, and Zygarde 50% in this league, in, in the Mega Division. So, that means that a Pokemon worth literally half of their value was the most valuable Pokemon in the finals, giving uh, the Lunalas the victory this season. Yeah. My, my question is, I want to know how this draft ended up happening, because looking at that team where you got a Torn Ogre core and then Raichu, I'm just... <laughs> I'm amazed, right? Like, that's that's usually, like, one of the first things that you, you try to stop from happening. So, for me, this is actually kind of, like, uh, fantastically, like, hilarious in a lot of ways. Um, we can... Okay, so we actually see this. I have the I have the document up. So, it was it was Torn Ogre first, the first two picks, right? I don't know if they were a wheel, a wheel pick or pick far apart or anything. Ser Serena, Araquanid, Ferrothorn, then Raichu. 
Raichu was the wow. sixth pick on this team, so that just shows how great of a draft that uh, the Lunalos were able to have in this season. That's that's awesome. I I'm I'm very happy for them because this this makes me want to use Raichu now because I'm like, hey, maybe my <laughs> nuzzles could work that way. There is absolutely no way. If I ever come back and report on this, I will guarantee you it's going to be like a zero percent success rate on my end. Listen, I love I, I love Raichu. Honestly, I've I've always loved it in VGC. I think it's a great supportive Pokemon. It there maybe are other Pokemon that do specific things better than it, of course, right? Uh, but I think it is a great general use supportive Pokemon in in VGC, and we really saw as to why in this matchup. So congratulations to Asaj on the uh, on the victory here in the Lonely Draft League. So uh, Regina, thank you for joining us in this matchup. We do have one more match to cover in, in VGC for the Lonely Draft League. So for anyone who's watched this match, you know, thank you for watching. Hopefully you like and subscribe to, you know, stay updated and see our other VGC match that Regina and I are going to cast. So for now, we will see you in that other matchup.